So, folks, I wanted to talk about that that comment that Donald Trump made in the debate when he was talking about black jobs. Um, I, I just want I've got some input here. If I've got some clips that I want to play for you. And I really I guess the question is, without even trying to diss black people, did Donald Trump diss black people? Did he just jam them in a box? Does he have a preconceived notion in his mind of what a black person's job is? It's a question I'd like to answer. And I've got some clips I don't want to play for you, but I've got two other clips before we get there that I want to play for you. This is from the rally of Donald Trump in Chesapeake, Virginia. And let's just listen to what he said, folks. He's talking about January 6th and that ruling from the Supreme Court. Let's have a listen to that. Biden's Department of Injustice has wrongly prosecuted hundreds of Americans for peacefully protesting on January 6th. Peacefully? Um... You know what, folks? I, I have to tell you this. If Donald Trump thinks that was a peaceful protest, this nation is already under attack, and most people don't realize it. If you look at that event on January 6th where they stormed the Capitol in all of the rage, hunting down congressmen and senators and, and Vice President Mike Pence, if you think that was a peaceful protest, we have lost a major battle in Americans' minds, and we are under attack in so many ways, folks. I mean, it, within the context of that being a peaceful protest, I mean, really, I rest my case with Donald Trump because there's nothing that this man won't do if you think that was a peaceful protest. And the other thing that he said here, folks, listen to this. Do you think he'll stop here? Under the Trump administration, we will not rest until we have found every single radical Islamic terrorist who Joe Biden has let into America. We will arrest them or we will throw them the hell out of our country immediately and we will not let them back in. We have no choice. Do you think he'll stop there? Do you think that he's got the ability to figure out who should go and who should stay? Or do you think it's just going to be a free-for-all where he'll just do whatever the hell he wants? I mean, folks, the, the signals are coming in, the red flags. I don't know if hopefully most, most folks out there see them, but these are red flags. Donald Trump is not going to stop at quote unquote terrorists. And do you think he's got the capability to figure out who is and who isn't? He's not going to stop there anyway. He's going to use that as a way to just get rid of whomever he wants to get rid of. He's, he's not going to stop there. I think that we've got to start listening to what this man is saying. And this nation is, is going to be under attack, I think. But let's get on to what we were talking about here. So this is what Donald Trump said, folks. I want to play you the clip. Here's Donald Trump talking about black people's jobs. The fact is that his big kill on the black people is the millions of people that he's allowed to come in through the border. They're taking black jobs now, and it could be 18, it could be 19, and even 20 million people. They're taking black jobs. They're taking black jobs. Um, I, I view that as a slander against black people, because what he's basically said is that these people coming over the border will do anything for a job, and those jobs are being held by black people. The very bottom of our society is what he's saying. What he's hinting at is that these jobs that they'll take away that the black people are doing, these are black jobs. These are jobs that blacks and Hispanics, I mean, he's talking already about a caste society, you know, where you have people, his idea of a society is you have people at different levels. And he sees, I think, from what he just said, black people at this level. I see black people in 
all sorts of jobs. I don't see them unlike I am. I, th I see them as presidents of companies. I see them as investors. I see them as, you know, everyday Americans. But I think my view of what he said in that statement is that he sees them down here. So these people that are coming in that will do anything for a job are, are going to end up losing their, their jobs. The black people are going to end up losing their jobs. And, and that was the the sort of threat that he was trying to convey. And it was backed up by Marco Rubio. Have a listen to this. I want to ask you specifically, yeah. Donald Trump said when it comes to the U.S. border, they're taking black jobs. He was talking about migrants taking black jobs. What is a black yes. job? Okay. Well, a couple things. First of all, you know what he meant by that, okay? Oh, really? Jobs that are filled by African Americans in America and others, Americans yeah. in general, but the question in specific was about black, black voters. He didn't ask that question. The moderators did. And so he segued into the impact that it's had on, on black voters. And that is very simple. When you flood a country with millions of people, you're going to have more competition for work. You are. And those workers are willing to do it at a lower wage. And, and that you see that in some of the fields like construction and, and trades. It impacts Hispanic communities as well. But he didn't say white jobs. He didn't say Chinese jobs. He said black jobs. So these people that are coming in that literally only have the shirt on their back, in Donald Trump's view, they're taking black jobs. I mean, folks, the, the signals are all over the place. Of He's trying to tell you who he is. And I think it's time that we listen to what Donald Trump is telling you, trying to tell you trying to get through you have to read into what he's saying but when you do i mean it's obvious what what he's saying folks and you know what i've i've looked around a little bit and i see a lot of people out there sort of making fun of it and it's good that they do and i've got something here that we can all laugh at you know a clip here in a second that i think is is just as funny and i can laugh with it too but the reality is sad you know, that we've got a guy that just might be the next president of the United States that's, that thinks like that. And I think it's time that we realize. But, I mean, we can, we can laugh at it for now and have a look at this, folks. With the recent announcement of black jobs being taken, here's a list of jobs for the blacks. Job opening number one is stove light supervisor. This person is in charge of making sure that the stove light is on and if the bulbs need changing. This tradition okay. is for us because it allows our ancestors to find and season our food in the middle of the night. Which brings us right on to job number two. You need at least 15 years of training for a <laughs> cast iron skillet trainer. This person is going to make sure that the cast iron skillet is passed down to the family member that knows how to cook, but also <laughs> knows how to properly clean it. We will not be giving this to just anyone. No. Now, number three is very important, one. the spades project manager. Not only are they in charge of taking the tools out of the deck, they're also in charge of scoring and making sure nobody trains anyone on how to play spades, but the people that sit down know how to play. And where would we be without number four? Number four is the T-shirt order director. This person is in charge of making sure all the T-shirts are ready for family reunion. All the T-shirts are ready for the home going. All the airbrushing is done. All the lettering is correct. And everybody has their $35 to $40 in on time. I see you, Tony. Now, the Kool-Aid coordinator is right up there with the macaroni cheese master. We need five <laughs> references. Do not play. And the homecoming shift lead will make... Macaroni and cheese master. Folks, I mean, we can laugh at this. And I'm, I'm glad to see that, you know, a lot of people are taking it lightly. But seriously, I mean, what's wrong with Donald Trump? I mean, black jobs, really. 